this idea of harmonic entropy. So <clears throat> entropy being like lack of order in a lot of ways could be introducing randomness or it could be organized chaos. Um, it kind of just depends on, I guess, how you'd look at it. But harmonic entropy in the way that I would approach the idea is I've learned that taking a sound and trying to uh, boost or subtract from a sound doesn't always get you a better result. I can't the, like the volume or the... Yes, essentially, but harm but volume in terms of like frequency spectrum. So when I was like starting to learn, you know, music and engineering and things like this, it's kind of like if you had a guitar and you're like, oh, I wish the guitar sounded more bright. Like you reach for this knob, you know, and everybody understands this for the most part. You reach for the knob that says like treble on the stereo and like you turn it up and things start to sound more bright. Or you want more boom, you reach for the knob that says bass. Or it's too bassy, you reach for the knob, turn it down, right? These attenuations that are taking place are specific volume adjustments to certain frequency ranges, right? So if you think about the most common one that almost everybody can identify with, even if they have no actual understanding of what it is, it's like bass, mid, and treble, or bass, mid, and high is like what you'll get in like a car stereo or your fucking iPod or whatever. When I'm talking about harmonic entropy, rather than a knob that I'm turning up and down, Let's say I want something to sound more bright. Instead of taking a knob and turning it up, I introduce harmonic entropy to that range of sound, that frequency range, the high range, to add what it would be randomness to the harmonics, right? And that lifts it up because it introduces, I don't know exactly the science behind it, but it introduces enough Differenti en en enough differentiation that allows things to then somehow be understood in a different way by your ears. I don't want to say better or worse because people are going to hear it differently. Different systems are going to, speakers or whatever are going to represent that differently. But like what I'm getting at is rather than just this push and pull type of approach with audio, I've taken a, a way more of a additive type of approach, but with harmonics. And, and almost always, it's a level of harmonic entropy. So for example, if I want to get a vocal to sound more clear, this is an example I just gave with AI, harmonic masking, right? Where it's like something's masking another thing. Well, maybe the reason why it's masking is because my ear was drawn to this thing that sounded really dope. It just happens to be in the same kind of place that the vocal is, right? So now I'm not getting the beauty of the vocal that I wanted but I'm getting a lot of the beauty of this other sound that I've created or chosen. And now the two can't live in the same world. Well, that's fucked up because I like both of them. Well, how do, how do I avoid that? Well, you know, remove one. Sometimes that's the solution. You just have to like cut your losses and move on. But if you introduce harmonic entropy where maybe I add, and this is a very common trick, you add to the most intelligible ranges of the vocal, you know, the things that we hear the most of the, out of the lyrical idea of like the word that they're saying or whatever, the consonant or the vowel or, or the infliction. I add in uh, essentially noise, like static or whatever, so that when their vocal is happening, those ranges of frequencies also have this essentially what is not pleasing to our ear, but because it's just sprinkled it's like you know powdered sugar so to speak you know just it's just the taste on top all of a sudden it pops out you know we haven't removed anything we've actually introduced more bullshit but it really we've introduced randomness almost always it's like a level of randomness against the original piece of information and all of a sudden it comes to us and we've made no sacrifices you know and it's just it Yes, the overall result is different than if we maybe made a sacrifice and pulled something back. And both results can be great. It just depends on what you're after at the end. You know, there's, there's, uh, pardon the expression, but there's like multiple ways to skin the whatever. <laughs> yeah. So, how I am trying to understand what you're telling me, it reminds me of photography, right? Whereas uh, some people don't like the digital, digital look because it looks too sharp and too clean and too, too perfect. Whereas other people will, even if they're working with digital, they'll actively add in some, some noise, some grain, yeah. just to make it feel a little bit more organic, right? It's exactly the same. Uh, in, a visual, in a visual arts world, and uh, I say this from a, an education perspective of looking at like my wife 
and my good friends that are like real visual artists. I'm not, but there's like this concept of adding value, right? So it's like, you need a background. You need this background to, to hold a certain amount of weight in your composition. You're just adding, you might be adding in all kinds of weird shit. You know, I, th I think of the Bob Ross of him just being like, we're going to do this and make these strokes and da, da, da. And it's like, when you look at it, just being there, it's like, the fuck is that? But then <laughs> once you, once it's a part of the full composition, it makes a lot, it has, it holds its value, right? Because you added these things to that, to be able to put that value in there. And it's exactly the same thing, like in, in, in the, uh, in the photography or videography, or I guess it's technically the same, like at the end of the day in that, in that realm of like, yeah, you add in a bit of noise or, or you add in a bit of motion blur, you know, or whatever it is to, uh, make that thing feel more of whatever it is that you want to convey, because it's always a matter of taste. That, that's a very interesting point. I hadn't thought about the concept of a focal point to sound before, but that's what I'm kind of getting from the point you're telling me, because uh, a realistic image or how our eyes are naturally attuned to work is like whatever you're looking at stays in focus, right? Whatever you're not looking at is not in focus. Right. The whole thing isn't in focus the whole time. No. So applying that to like sound, for example, some things yes. are out of focus, some things are in focus. Yes, correct. Wow, that, that's a very interesting Yeah, uh, yeah, because some things are there to add the value and some things are there to be the focal point. 